Hey everybody, I'm Robert. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome down to the studio. First of all, I would like to thank each and every one of you for all the support that you've given on the Yaris video on the, the magnificent money shift that I pulled off. Uh, thank you for all the comments and just really all the feedback. It's really cool to see. What we're doing today is I'm going to take you down to Florida with the SSC Tuatara and Jason, who actually designed the car. He's going to walk us around the car, explain to us some of the ins and the outs of it. I told you guys that I owed you my impressions of the SSC Tuatara my feedback on the runs from my own words, and I just want to let it all digest, get settled myself, and I'm ready to do that. We've got the studio set up, we've got the fantastic chair set up, we've got everything in place, so I promise you in the coming days we're going to talk SSC to Atara. We've got a great video coming on Porsche ownership, my love and hate relationship with Porsche, E30 M3 updates, Yaris updates, etc. So for those of you that are new, welcome to the channel. For, all, for those of you that have been here a while, welcome back. Hope you guys enjoy a little walk around of the SSC Tuatara. Hey everybody, I'm Robert. I'd like to welcome you back to the channel. Today I'm here with Jason from Jason Castriota Design. Jason is the man behind the design of the SSC Tuatara. Yes, yeah. thank you for having me, Robert. <laughs> My pleasure, thank you for, well, what we're gonna do now is a walk around of the car. Uh, Jason's going to tell us a few of his favorite points of design, uh, some of the keys that make this car so special, and I would, in my words, say so slippery. So I'm excited. <laughs> yeah, I'm, so I'm excited to hear what Jason has to say. Obviously, I've been here for uh, a couple weeks now with you guys off and on as the car's been running. We've got to talk a lot about a lot of cool things, but now, uh, why don't you take it away? Tell me, when did you start designing this car? So amazingly enough, uh, pencil to paper on this car was in the spring of 2010. So we are quite literally 10 years later, uh, and here we are. We did the first design model for this car in the summer of 2010, and we unveiled it uh, essentially in 2011. From that original design model, the exterior shape actually hasn't changed. It's, it's gone through its usual assortment of, you know, rad, rad changes, radius changes, um, but ultimately the shape was always to be as slippery as possible out of the gate. And what we really wanted to do was not just control airflow over the car, but actually control airflow through the car. And that's what really makes the car unique. So when you start at the nose of the car, you can already see kind of how the lights falling on the car. This literally creates a channel that ramps air right into that rear air intake. So that allows us to get really good thermal dynamics, get great pressure into the engine. The front of the car is actually splitting the air. So there's there's actually an S duct inside the vehicle. So it really creates a Le Mans car like hull. So that comes in here basically. Correct, so we have great high pressure here through the radiator, mm -hmm. front radiator, and then it has an S duct, which then guides that air at super velocity to the side of the car. And what we use is we use this air curtain here. This air intake splits between an air curtain and the brake cooling. The air curtain then helps reattach that laminate air here. And then this, this vein here helps again keep that airflow really at high velocity through the side of the car. And you'll see, I'll share some aero images with you later. The airflow on the side of the car is exceptionally laminate and the wake of the car is exceptionally long. So the car really mimics as if it's quite longer than it, than it really appears. You know, there's a couple other things we really wanted with this vehicle. We wanted this vehicle to be exceptionally safe. So we wanted to be able to run the vehicle with this low drag coefficient, but still have pitch, still have some wedge in the vehicle. We also wanted to make sure the center of pressure of the vehicle was behind the driver, low in the vehicle, and we wanted that aero axle balance to mimic more or less the weight balance of the vehicle. And what that allows us to do is as the car begins to get sucked down over speed, and even under transition, when you go from accelerating to braking, it does it in parallel, front and rear, because the aero balance is nearly identical to the weight balance on the car. And this is something that I find really interesting because obviously we do a lot of running on the Nürburgring, which is a very imbalanced track. Yes. So we have a lot of turns, and this is something I've been dealing with on, on a lot of my cars, is setting up the rake and the aero namely recently is my 620R. Yeah. Um, I've been working with the with the rake to get my aero balance so that when I lift at high speed, I don't get loose in the back. Yeah, because it's giving you a little more downforce, exactly. a little so more angle so you're of attack. keeping the balance yeah. between it. So a lot of people are always thinking about suspension as being the only way to keep balance in a car, but aero is actually really important. Yeah, no, it's, it's super critical. I mean, you know, everybody talks about drag coefficient, but that drag number is generally at a much lower velocity. You know, they're giving you a drag coefficient that the car achieves probably at 120, 150 miles an hour. You know, the base drag on this car is under 2.8, but at 500 kph, at 311, 312 miles per hour, we're only at a 3.1. And we're able to do that through the active arrow. So when the rear wing pops up, 
again, and the ride height lowers, it allows us to maintain the aero balance, identical aero balance from about 150 miles an hour all the way up to top speed. And what that gives the driver is tremendous confidence that this car is always gonna react the same way. And that was very critical to us. And as, as you see here, we actually used the owner of the car. Yeah. You know, he's, he, like a lot of owners, does track days, but he's not a professional race car driver. So when something that I have a lot of interest in is, um, as we've been talking about the capabilities of the car, uh, we, we spoke about how cooling is one of your biggest yes. enemies in, in, a, in a top speed run where you've got, uh, you know, how long was the car full throttle for? I mean, 45 <laughs> seconds to a minute full throttle. Yeah, about 60 seconds full throttle. What, what would you describe as basically cooling drag? You, you have a certain set of a bit of drag. A lot of people don't realize that you know, you want at 100 miles an hour, you want a certain amount of airflow to come in, but at 300 miles an hour, yeah. that airflow could overwhelm the, the drag capacities of the car. Correct. It's getting air in and out of the car is incredibly critical. So that velocity of air coming in the car, alongside of the car, into this rear radiator, can actually cause drag because you can actually get an effect where the air actually starts bouncing. The radiator just can't extract it yeah. enough. So that process of working on the ducting and we, we affectionately call all the ducting back here kind of a nest of snakes uh, it's, they're very difficult to fabricate because they're they're very complex between how we're splitting the air uh, between upper radiators air intake and then of course the larger radiators here so, so and then extracting that so air. at lower speeds your air is going through the radiator mm -hmm. and it's just going right out the back of the car correct but at high speed the radiator can't flow that much and this is where this cooling drag essentially this concept comes becomes an issue correct is that when the radiator is overwhelmed it can't accept any more flow yeah we had okay. to do a lot of fine tuning to make sure we could really extract the air and, and one of the, the things we're able to do is through the various vents and obviously the very open rear of the car we're able to keep pressure so between the high pressure coming uh, from the diffuser underneath the car air coming over the car and then again we have another what we call a base bleed or another type of s-duct type situation here where air comes over the car this actually isn't a cooling vent. This is actually an air intake. So air enters here, and then it gets sucked out of the rear of the car. And what that does, it helps create that super clean wake and keep the car exceptionally stable at high speed. So you have air that comes over the car, and, and normally it would hit down. the wing and just kind of create turbulence at the yep. back of the car. It goes in and then out and the, then above out. the diffuser. Correct. Yeah. And, and that, that mixes helps. with, that basically fills in the dirty wake, if you will. Correct. Okay. And it cleans up the car. And you'll see okay. in the images I'll share with you, the wake of the car is clean, more well more than a car length behind the vehicle. And that's, again, what gives that great high speed stability. Now you were telling me something, and it was uh, kind of interesting to me, um, that when you first started designing it, that at high speeds, the wake of the car is actually several car the lengths. Center the center of pressure. Yeah, center it was pressure, incredible. Yeah. So if you want to go- um, Yeah, let's go around. If you want to go around. Uh, you know, much like a missile or a jet, if the front of this vehicle is really piercing air. Right. And when we ran the car in the wind tunnel the first time, the drag was where we expected it to be. It was actually around 0.3, which is great out of the box. Most hyper cars are in the kind of mid threes or 3.4, 3.5. Three, three, uh, this car was exceptionally slippery out of the box, but the center pressure of the vehicle was actually multiple car lengths ahead of the vehicle. At that speed, the car, at, and again, we did all our CFD testing at 500 kph. And you know, the joke of my, my aerodynamic team was, are we designing a car or a jet? And I said, no, no, it's a car, but it kind of <laughs> looks like a jet. So, so to walk that back, you know, the, the team did a phenomenal job. And a lot of that was really, again, that internal airflow. It was really, how are we gonna manage air in and out of the car to reduce that pressure within the radiator ducts and within the wheel wells to ensure that air was always moving through the car. So kind of like a group C car from the 80s, you yeah. know, where they're really pulling air through the car and that's what made those cars so fast down Mosan. And I think that's what a lot of people don't realize is that when a car is actually pushing, it's pushing air that could be all the way at that race trailer ahead of it. Correct. Yeah. And that's Several what it's forcing ahead. that's what it's forcing ahead of it to actually accelerate or continue and this is yeah. where that's this, the wall of air that's the hit. wall of air that's, that's when you see cars stop accelerating because there's literally been a, a buildup of pressure in front of them that's now just stopping and so the concept here is that wall of air that's being built instead of making the car push through it you're letting the air go through the car yes in, in simple terms exactly okay. yeah very cool well Thank you very much for doing that little walk around with us. Pleasure. I know that there's so much more that we could probably sit here for a day and talk about it. It is neat to see something with such a low drag coefficient. One thing I can say is there were several times during these top speed runs um, that I was standing uh, next to the side of the runway at the timing, uh, or the, would you say the speed measurement uh, beacon, 
and it was going past plus over 270 miles an hour and it sounded quieter than some cars I've heard on the Autobahn yeah. at 150, 180. And that was really impressive to me. And I'm not talking motor noise, I'm actually talking air. The, 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 best, air the best compliment we got from Johnny Bomber was he said, that's the quietest car I've ever seen here. And that means that it's moving the least amount of air. Yeah. And if anything, that put your car hand out the window of your car when you're driving and you're moving a ton of air, spread your fingers, you're moving less, you can hear it, you can feel it. My, my favorite bit, and Jared will have to take you for a ride, and or Larry at this point, but at 200 miles per hour, you can drive with the window down and air actually doesn't spill That's in really the car. Cool. That's really cool. Because the air is so laminate to the side of the That's glass. Awesome. Yeah. Very good. Well, again, thank you so much for taking the time Thanks to walk around me. this beautiful car. Great design. Thank you, Rob. Um, one thing I've always said is the car looks really slick. There's obviously, I've had many opportunities to go around the car and look at it see see it underway see it fully loaded and, and it really is a beautiful car I really, I really do have a lot of fun with it um by the time this video comes out you guys have probably already seen what it did top speed wise i think uh that i'm probably one of the most critical people or one of the three or four most critical people uh, about this car and um i think the car will do even more than it did i, I really think it has a lot of potential uh, it's been fun for me getting to see the car and, and to get to be near the car but um, I continue to pull for it to maybe crack that 300 number very soon. So thank you guys so much. I hope you enjoyed a little bit of a, a walk around this car and maybe talking about some design features and more importantly, some really cool aero features. We'll catch you guys later.